Today we're going to go over five code smells that you need to watch out for. These are mistakes in your code that can kill the clarity and efficiency of your code, and in general, make it difficult for other people to understand it. Not to worry, we'll show you a tried and true method to fix these. With that, let's dive in. So what exactly is a God function? Well, imagine a function that does it all. It fetches data, forms calculations, updates the database, and even makes your coffee in the morning. These are generally hundreds of lines long and typically the nucleus of an application. Like that one nacho chip that all the others are stuck to by melted cheese. So what are the consequences of letting God functions roam free in your code base? Well, first off, they're hard to test because their hands are in so many cookie jars. Debugging becomes a nightmare and making changes without breaking something else? Good luck with that. If you're not, for there is hope. Here's how. First, we're going to go through and identify all the responsibilities that this function does. Then we're going to take those responsibilities and break them into smaller functions, making sure that we name those functions descriptively. So if there's a couple of functions that look like they belong together, we'll put them in a class together. And lastly, we'll write tests for it and then make sure everything passes. And then we'll repeat this process until your God function has minimal responsibilities or is no longer needed. You come across a function with a parameter list that looks like the ingredients for a potion in a fantasy novel. A pinch of this, a dash of that, and before you know it, you're lost in a sea of parameters. Not to worry, we're here to navigate through the chaos. So why is this a problem? Long parameter lists can make your code less readable, harder to understand, and debugging becomes a real headache. Let's explore some solutions to make our functions cleaner and more organized. The first step is to group related parameters. Just like organizing a closet, group similar items together. For instance, if you have parameters related to user details, group them under a single object or structure. Another handy trick is to use default values for parameters when it makes sense. If you don't specify it, it uses the defaults. Consider using the builder pattern, especially when dealing with complex objects. You can use a builder pattern to slowly build up your end result with multiple functions. If all else fails, it might be a sign that your function is trying to do too much. Consider breaking them down into multiple functions. You've seen it, right? A bunch of if-else statement nested inside of each other, creating a tangled mess. It's a common problem and it makes your code hard to read and maintain. But there are practical ways to clean this up. Let's explore some strategies to make our code cleaner and more maintainable. If the conditions in your if else statements are checking for string values, you can use a map or an object instead, where you can just reference a key in a map and it'll return the value or run a function. Alternatively, you can use a strategy pattern. The strategy pattern involves creating a set of algorithms and selecting the one that you need. Each strategy should have a common shape or interface. In this case, each strategy has an execute function. So when a function uses a strategy, it'll call that execute function. Depending on the strategy you select, it'll change the functionality. This is when someone modifies the arguments of a function or modifies a variable outside the scope of the function. This can lead to unpredictable outputs from a function, especially if the function is being used in several places. It can reduce hard to track down bugs into your code as changing code outside of the function can introduce bugs inside the function. In this case, when we set global to null outside the function, inside the function will get an error because global.a doesn't exist anymore. Fortunately, it's easy to fix these. First off, avoid global variables where possible. And instead of mutating the arguments, try returning a value from the function instead. And as a general rule, just stay away from lets and bars and use constants instead. This is a code smell that I haven't seen in too many videos or blog posts as it's more of an abstract idea. When you have some functionality that has potential to change, it should be passed into the function or class. Functions that tend to do too much will implement the function within it instead of having it passed in. This can lead to harder to test code and make your code harder to maintain in the long run. As an example, say we have a calculate function and its purpose is to add and subtract two numbers. Now, if we were to implement this in a non-extensible way, We'd have two parameters for the numbers and maybe a third parameter that is just a string. And inside the function, we have an if statement. If an add, then we'll add them together. If it's subtract, we'll subtract the numbers. Now, the problem with this is that if someone wants to add some more functionality, they're going to have to go inside of the calculate function and add it themselves. This can lead to God functions. As you add more features, the function just keeps getting longer. Instead, we can do this in a more extensible way. So for our third parameter, we can use something called dependency injection, which is a fancy way of just saying we're going to pass in the functionality. So our third parameter can be a function by using a pass in add, or they can pass in subtract function, and then we pass in the first two arguments into those functions. That way, later down the line, if we want to add multiply, divide, 
we don't have to change the initial calculate function. And we actually have one extra bonus tip for you. And that is just to make sure your code is testable. If you notice all the code smells we had, a lot of the downside is the code isn't testable. So if you adopt a practice like TDD, test-driven development, where you write the test first, you can avoid a lot of these problems. Earlier in the video, I made reference to a couple of design patterns. I'll be leaving a link in the description to those. Also, if you're looking for more front-end development videos, be sure to check out our last couple of videos. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe. We'll be doing more fun projects in the future. And thanks for watching.